In the last lecture, we learned how the value of this keyword is determined based on where we are using this keyword and how we are using it. Now, in this lecture, let's try to understand some of the pitfalls of this keyword when used inside a regular function and when it is used inside an arrow function. In this way, you will have a good understanding on when to use which function syntax when working with this keyword and when to avoid it. For that, here I have again created this person object where we have the name and birth year property and we have this calculate age method which is going to return the age of the user, age of the person based on this birth year by subtracting it from the current year. Now inside this calculate age function, we are using this keyword and in the last lecture we learned that when we use this keyword inside a method this keyword points to the object on which we are calling that method here we are calling this calculate age method on this person object so inside this calculate age method at this point this keyword will point to this person object so this dot birth here will be equivalent to person dot birth here and what is person dot birth here it is 1990 so from 2024, 1990 will be subtracted and based on that, it is going to return the result. It is going to return the age. That age we are storing in this age variable. Let's also go ahead and let's log that age variable in the console. And inside this function, just to check the value of this keyword, let's also log this. So let's say console.log this. And we already know what the value of this keyword will be. It will be this person object. Let's save the changes and you will see that when we are logging this keyword inside this calculate age function, since we have called it on this person object, inside this calculate age function, this variable is pointing to this person object. And this dot birth year in that case will be 1990 because this is pointing to person object. So this year will be person dot birth year, which is 1990. That will be subtracted from 2024 and the result will be 34. So we are getting the result as expected. Now let's do one more thing. Let's create another function. Let's call it greet user. And this function we are going to create using arrow function syntax. So here I'm going to use this syntax, this arrow function syntax. This greet function, let's say it is going to take the name parameter or we will not pass any parameter because we already have a name property here. So we will use this name property. And inside that we are simply going to log a greeting message so for that let's say console.log and let's say good morning and then we want to print the name of the person so here we will say this dot name we are using the name property of this person object now we have learned that for an arrow function we don't get a this keyword of its own so this arrow function uses the this keyword of its parent scope. Now, one more thing I want to mention here is that this code block, which you see here, this code block, this is not a code block actually. Here, we are using a syntax to create an object. So using these curly braces, we create an object. So this is a syntax. This is not a code block. Using this curly braces, we are creating an object. Okay, so remember that this is not a code block. It is a syntax which we are using for creating this person object. So these two curly braces here, these opening and closing curly braces, this is not going to create a scope. Okay, this code block here, it is not creating any scope because this is not a code block. It is a syntax which we are using for creating this person object. This is very important to understand. So this greet user function, which we have created using this arrow function syntax, what will be the parent scope for this arrow function? The parent scope for this arrow function will be the global scope because we are defining this person object in the global scope and in that person object, we are creating this greet user function using this arrow function syntax. So for this arrow function also, the parent scope will be the global scope. So here, when I go ahead and when I call this greet user function on the person object, so let's say person dot greet user. Okay, this greet user function, it is also present inside this person. So this greet user is a method of this person object. And when we are calling it on the person object, in here, we are trying to use this keyword. Okay, 
Now, if I save the changes, what it should log? The expectation is it should log good morning and then John. But if I save the changes, you will see that it logs good morning and then nothing. Now, why is that? That's because here this keyword is pointing to global scope. And actually what I will do is instead of calling it name, I'll call it first name because on the global object also we have a name property. So I'll call it first name. And here let's try to use first name property. So I'm changing it because as I said on the global object, on the window object also we have a name property. So we don't want to use that. That's why I'm setting it to first name. Now let's save the changes and you will see that now the result is good morning undefined. Now why is that? That's because this keyword here inside this arrow function, since this arrow function does not get its own this keyword, it is pointing to the this keyword of its parent scope. Here for this arrow function, the parent scope is the global scope. And in the global scope, this keyword points to the global object that is window object. So if I go ahead and if I log this keyword inside this arrow function, if I save the changes, you will see that it is logging the window object. So inside this arrow function, this keyword is pointing to window object. Okay. And on the window object, we do not have a name property. If I expand this window object, I mean, not name property, first name property. You will not see any first name property here. Okay, now if I scroll down, there will be a name property. So on the window object, we also have a name property, which is empty string. That's why earlier when we were using name, the this dot name was empty string. But we do not have any first name property here. And since we do not have any first name property, we are seeing undefined. Good morning, undefined. All right. Now let me show you one more thing. And that is in the global scope, if I create a variable called first name, using var keyword, not let and const, var keyword. And there, if I assign it with a value, let's say mark, what it does is, since we are using var keyword to create this variable, this first name, this first name will be created as a property on the global object, on this window object. So at this line, since we have used var keyword to create this variable, with this variable name, a property will be created on this window object, okay? If I save the changes now, you will see the result is good morning mark. And if I expand this window object, now you will see that we have a first name property assigned with this value mark. So when we create a variable using var keyword, with that variable name, a property gets created on the window object. But let's not worry about that here. I just wanted to show you this. So here, if I save the changes, we have an unexpected result. Let me remove this console.log statement also from here and also from this calculate age method. Let's save the changes. So you see here we have this error undefined because inside this arrow function, we thought of using the first name property of this person object. And we wanted to access this person object using this keyword. But since we are using arrow function, arrow function does not get its own this keyword. So here, instead of using the object on which we are calling this greet user function, it is using the value of this keyword of its parent scope. Ideally, if we use any other function syntax apart from arrow function syntax, since we have called this greet user function on this person object, here this keyword should point to that person object. But since we are using arrow function syntax here, we will not get a this keyword for that arrow function. So it will use the this keyword of its parent scope. Okay. Now let's take another example. So what we will do is inside this calculate age method, let's create another method. Let's call it maybe greet and let's create this function using regular function syntax. So here I'm using function expression. And here, since I'm creating a regular function, we need to create it like this. And again, I need to create it before this return keyword so that this code will also get executed. And let's call this greet function here. Now, what do we want to do inside this greet function? Let's say console.log. And here again, I'll try to do the same thing. Let me copy this and let me paste it here. All right. Let me go ahead and let me remove this greet user function from here. We don't need it anymore. 
Let's save the changes. Now, here we have this error. That's because what we are doing here. Inside this calculate age function, we are creating another function called greet. This is a regular function. We are using regular function syntax here. This is not a method. This is a function. And how we are calling it? We are calling it like a regular function. We are not calling it on any object. So when we are calling this calculate age function, this function will be executed. We are calling this function on this person object. So inside this function, this keyword will point to that person object. Now inside this function, we are also creating this regular function, this create function, and we are calling it. Now we have learned that when we create a regular function, in that case, inside that regular function, this keyword points to window object in non-strict mode, and it is undefined in strict mode. Now currently, if I scroll to the top, currently we are in this strict mode. That means inside this function, inside this greet function, which is a regular function, when we are trying to use this keyword, since we are in strict mode, this will be undefined. And on that undefined, we are trying to call this first name property. And that's why we have this error, cannot read properties of undefined. Okay, now let me go ahead and let me comment that use strict here. Let's scroll down. And now, this will point to the window object because this is a regular function. So in a non-strict mode, inside a regular function, this keyword points to the window object, the global object. And on that global object, we don't have any first name property. So now if I save the changes, you will see this message, good morning, undefined. Why? Because on the window object, this keyword here inside this regular function, it is pointing to global object, that is window object. And on that, we don't have a first name property. So this expression is returning undefined. And that's what you will see logged here. And here we have this error because we are trying to access greet user, which we have removed. So let me also remove this line. Okay. So I hope you got the point. Basically, since this is a regular function, inside this regular function, even though we have created this regular function inside this calculate age method, and we are calling this calculate age method on this person object. So inside this calculate age method, this keyword will point to person object. But then in that calculate age method, when we are creating this regular function inside that function, since it is a regular function, this keyword will point to global object in non-strict mode or undefined in strict mode. Now what we want is somehow we want to make sure that this keyword here inside this regular function does not point to the global object. Instead, it points to the object on which we are calling this calculate age method. For that, what we can do is here, we can go ahead and we can create a variable. Let's call it self. And to that, let's assign this because as we learned inside this calculate age method, this will point to the object on which we are calling that calculate age method. So at this line, we are calling calculate age method on this person object. So this here will point to this person object and we are assigning this to this self variable. And now inside this greet function, instead of using this, we can use self. And if I save the changes now, we should have proper result. So now it says, good morning, John. Another solution would be, so this is solution one. Another solution would be, let me comment this line here. And instead of using a function expression, we can use arrow function syntax because we have learned that in case of arrow function, arrow function does not get its own this keyword. So it uses this keyword of its parent scope. Now, in this case, for this arrow function, the parent scope will be this method, this calculate age method. And in that calculate age method, this keyword will point to this person object because we are calling that calculate age method on that person object. So here, this arrow function will use the this keyword of its parent scope of this calculate age method. There, the, this keyword is pointing to this person object. So here, we can simply say this dot first name. And if I save the changes, we should have same result. Good morning, John, because now inside this greeting function, since it is an arrow function, this here will point to this keyword of this calculate age method. And in this calculate age method, this keyword will point to the object on which we are calling this calculate age method. 
currently we are calling it on this person object so inside this calculate age method this keyword will point to that person object so this dot first name here is person dot first name and what is person dot first name it is john so that's what is logged here all right so i hope with these examples now you fully understand when to use arrow function when working with this keyword and when not to use arrow function so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day